your hand once during that particular person. Uh, you are not allowed to give your five minutes away to anyone uh, to continue speaking uh, per your attorney. Um, and I think that's it. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Well, Robert's rules and your attorney. Robert's rules. Mm -hmm. I don't, we've always had the five minutes of it. Right. Well, actually, Robert's rules is three minutes. Your board extended it to five. It's been five minutes for the 20 years I've been here. I'm just saying what Robert's rules is three, and Stony Brook's is five. They've given you an extra two minutes. <laughs> okay. Sharon, Mr. Maker is first. I'm going to take a page from Andy Coverdale's book, and um, I've got a speech. So go ahead and set the timer, Mrs. Kern. Uh, good evening. My name is Sharon Fenstermaker, and I live at 21330 Lancaster Run. On September the 8th, I received an email from Jordan Paul. I'm hoping that all the residents in attendance at the September meeting who signed in also received that email. The table that was set up did not have the capability to write legibly, so if you did not receive an email from Jordan, please send your email address to Jordan at Jordan M -M Paul at gmail.com. Jordan even added her phone number as another way of reaching out to her. That number is 630-341-2786. The information in her email was vitally important on many levels. The biggest issue is electronic voting. At the HOA August meeting, Mr. Reynolds said the following. First one is the board resolution dealing with electronic voting. Right now, electronic voting is not available to us. It's still in the process of being brought to a point where it works. We don't want to have a vote using electronic voting until it works right. We just want to have the mechanism in place so we can go. The state approved using electronic voting last year, and we would run this through Alliant Property Management when we do the voting. Why? A few, just take a few seconds to think about it. It's just not going to happen until sometime next year. But we just want to be ahead of the game and in place. Sometime next year appeared on August the 31st when Mrs. Kern called Jordan saying the board decided to go with a company that Alliant uses. H-O-A-S-T, host. How did they go from sometime next year to solidifying the company in a matter of weeks? Am I skeptical? Yes, I am. Jordan found a company, Town Square, to set up our electronic voting. Town Square would be an independent entity versus a company that was chosen and has ties with Alliant Property Management. The company that our board is going to go with could be biased. Town Square has nothing to gain by establishing the voting in Stony Brook. They could care less what passes and what doesn't pass. On the other hand, Alliant Property Management may tend to yield one outcome over another. I feel this is totally un-American. Our community should be run upon a democratic system. This is just my opinion. You can use your own judgment. We, the condo community, and the two Villa Streets have changed management companies over the years. Alliant Property Management has run Stony Brook since the beginning. Perhaps now is the time the board starts looking at other management companies. Given too much power is not always a good thing. Take a look at what has happened in our past history when a certain group gains too much power. Please do not let this happen here in Stony Brook. Again, this is just my opinion. Jordan did reach out and she found Town Country. Here is a printout of nine pages of this company that was established in 2014, serving communities globally since that time. 
Here is Town Square, two pages, that was established in 2020. As I said before, Mr. Reynolds said that he did not want to get this up and running. He wanted to hold off using electronic voting until it works right. Host, even in their printout, states it's committed, this company is committed to continuous improvement. So that tells me they still have a lot to work out. I have printed out these, this, I didn't print out this, this was worthless. I printed out this, you will find it in the back of the room. You will also find a tablet and a pen, and if you did not get an opportunity to sign up at Jordan's meeting, then please take the opportunity tonight. Thank you very much. Mike Hornerad? No, wait a minute. Yeah. Board, are you going to have no remarks on this? Well, first of all, I'll make one remark. Uh, when Tammy was talking to Jordan, she did not say we're going with uh, Alliant. We said it's one of the companies that are. We have not, as a board, or through Rich's committee, committed to anybody for electronic voting. So you were... Okay. Understand that. And also, Alliant came on property in 2009, not we've from had, the beginning. We've had at least three management companies that I know of. I think there might have been four, but at least SNS three. SNS Family Property she's Services. Saying, well, she's saying the digital software program. No, she said... No, we, we, we heard what she said. said. And uh, the bit about Alliant, isn't there a little bit of slander in that? I totally take offense to exactly what you said. I don't find it slanderous. Does anybody find it slanderous? I was yes. just thinking. I, yes. I, just I find it very slanderous okay. to align. Yeah. You accused yeah. us of things that is false, that. false, false. In my false. opinion, none of these people and here it's called slander. To, none of these people here have to uh, agree with me. That's just my opinion. No, I understand I'm that. I'm the American, and I have the right through our Constitution to voice my opinion. Whether and I do like too. Whether you do not. As your cam, you said a lot of false information. Period. What? Another fine? <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to say something, Dennis? You had your hand up. Anybody from the board? My, my point was just she asked if I found it, it slanderous, and I did. That was it. You asked if anybody did, and I said I did. It, I know it's your opinion, um, but based on what was read and based on the response, and I haven't looked at it myself, but I now have the impression that maybe some of the information that the lady presented in the speech was not correct. I know since I've moved here, since I lived here since 03, that there's been more than one management company. That's all I mean. I just think that all of us, if we've got an opinion, we need to make sure our facts are straight. I'm not sure that the person you quoted had all her facts straight. That's all I'm saying. Okay, and I might have been, I, excuse me, I might have been wrong. Would you like to raise your hand before you speak? You're recognized. Excuse me, excuse me, I might have been wrong. When I first moved here in 2003, for many, many, many years, I didn't even come to a board meeting. I had a job, and I didn't take partake of this. So I was under the assumption, so my assumption is wrong, which you know what the word assumption means, that you guys had been in charge all those years. So nine years you've been here. But I don't know what I said that was slanderous. Tell me what I said. That we need to move on. Yes. You and I can chat later if you'd like. No, no, hold on. Yes, no, 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 Mrs. Kern, I'm not chat chatting with you. That cost me $200 before, no thank you. You didn't even talk to me when you got that. I wasn't even in the building yes, when you, you got were. that. You were all right, all right. That's it, Mike, you're off. <laughs> Mike Hornet, 21212 Braxfield Loop. I've just I've got uh, two questions, and, and I'll just ask the question that you guys can answer them. Um, I want to know, how, what are the minimum required votes to change the 15.8? If I read the Stony Brook newsletter properly. 741, roughly. You, so the only way the 15.8 can get wiped out is if you have 741 votes. It's either 741 or 746. Yeah, right there. Okay. All right. So there's a good chance that 15.8 is going to stay in place. You got it. The next question is, what are the minimum uh, number of votes required to change the $200 minimum that you guys can 
um, would assess a year to a thousand. What are the what's the minimum number of votes? We have to change 15.8 first to do that. If we did, if 15.8 doesn't change, then it's just then it's 66 and two thirds percent of so the it ball stays, of the state. So it stays at 200. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then, and the last comment I have is I hope you really give town square voting um, uh, a real look because I'd be in favor of an independent. Okay. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? I, I just want to make uh, just a clarification. Host is works with uh, Alliant. No, we would no. hire them. They're a third party. They're, they're a third party. party. They're, not, they're not any part no. of... No. Okay. No. All right. And, and I just want to make sure because I'm, I'm, I thought they were, I thought they were a subsidiary of... No. No. Okay. No. The last statement that you made about host, you... No, I didn't use the word host. Alliant or what was the last no, I comment? Said, I, want, I love to have the board. I didn't use the word love. I said I'd like to have them gifts strong consideration for town square for our voting right for our electronic voting to make it there was something at the end of that though no no no, 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 no just, no, just no. No. No, exactly. again we haven't even looked at anybody yet because all i'm doing is we have one through alliant that we have no commitment to and the board hasn't even started looking at other ones yet uh it's on the agenda to, to do so i'm just asking to make sure you guys right and yeah then we will and Perfect. keep in mind that that whoever we go with We'll still work through Alliant. I mean, because Alliant's yeah. the one that owns the uh, or has the addresses. And well, uh, one thing that I, I don't think, because uh, I didn't know this, but when you have electronic voting, it has to either run through the secretary of the board or through your management company. By law. Now, if I'm <laughs> incorrect on that, please let me know. But it would have to go through Jim, who's the secretary, and he would control all aspects of uh, paperwork coming in, voting, the, everything involved. And, or it would be through the management company. And I'm trying to, uh, I'm in the process of setting up a demo for host so that the board can look at, and we would certainly look at three, four, probably other companies, minimum. Great town square well. Okay. okay. Do you know? Because we're all new to this. This is all new. So. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. We will definitely okay. be looking at least at four companies. And it's up to the board to make that decision. Sure. No, I did. I just no, I'm just letting everybody know because I'm new to this too in the last couple of years. So. Yeah, keep in mind that, that uh, it, last year was the first year that, that the state allowed electronic voting. So we couldn't do it before then, even if we wanted to. Yeah, no, I know. You guys know, so. were talking about four Yeah, right. So right. I, I'd like to also say something that Mike raised because I myself was confused initially. We don't know if we're going to be changing <clears throat> our voting. It, if we get into spending over 300,000, we need 741 votes. But the assessment cannot move unless the first article moves. And initially, it was decided right now we can only assess two hundred dollars in any given year we wanted to change that up to one thousand dollars even though initially we were talking three hundred and sixty dollars there was never any discussion or intention to assess one thousand dollars there was a lot of confusion about that we never ever exp expressed that consideration it was just to go up a maximum we don't want to come back every year or every two years if we have an emergency so it was never to assess one thousand dollars I just wanted to clarify that because there was some confusion thank you so I ask you a question yes sure okay but it seems like if you approve one thousand it seems like governmental entities Get it to 1,000. Well, I mean, you can say, you, yeah. you know, no, I'm just, no. you, you can say that your intent is only three, let's just say 350, okay? But it seems like all the time when you have that threshold at 1,000, it always works its way up there. That's, it, that's my only concern. It certainly can, but keep in mind that for, for 22 years we've had 200 and we've never assessed 200. I know, but <laughs> my only concern is if you set it at 1,000, it seems like. It's at 999.
Well, again, you can say we had it at 200 and we've never had an assessment. Oh, well, we've had assessment for the mailbox. Right, 35 Yeah, 35 oh, okay. You have something? Well, I was just going to say, remember, we're homeowners too. It affects all of us. It's not like we're making, we don't have to pay that. We pay just as much as you do. And this, the up to 1,000 was purely in case there's some kind of a catastrophe. Catastrophe. Yeah. Too, that comes through. And, yeah. and it was also uh, in case. No, we pay too. 15 so or well, years later. That. Yeah. But I'm just saying, when you put it at 1,000, it seems like increased right up. Well, it seems like we're, you know. Well, that's your opinion, and we respect it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And that could be changed when we, if we ever vote, able to vote to change it. We could drop it down to 500. We, they just grab 1,000 as an arbitrary figure. So you won't have to go on back. Every time price of living and stuff goes up and we need more, we have to go in and change the uh, covenants. So you got to look at it where it is, and it comes time to forever vote on that. We listen and we come out with something amicable for everybody. And we'll listen to what the residents vote. That's yeah. Yeah. Might, by the time that it would be a pass, you might have a bunch of new people sitting up there. Okay, uh, Megan. It's okay for the past time we brought it up. Okay, thank you. Uh, Diane uh, Como? Or Camo? Thank you. I'm great at mispronouncing names, and I apologize. Diane Como, uh, 21565 Night and Run. So I'd like to say at first, uh, I want to ask the law how we can, the law, the owners, have access to legal support, not just the board. And the reason why is because when I read in a newsletter, we're talking about uh, changing wording. Okay, sorry. We're talking about changing wording, so it's only the people's prison that can vote or something. I'd like to get an advice from the lawyer, really, uh, if you think about changing some notes to reduce the vote, because otherwise it's too confusing. Something else, too. Um, I'd like as well to have a legal advice about natural disaster. If there are some clause in Florida statute that could provide room to fix damage. We should not use fear mongering, and I want to know why we would be left with nothing. Because in the newsletter, that's what it said. We want to lower the voting because in case we have some disaster, we might need to spend more money for that. So I'd like to know what the resources are because we went through Irma and apparently we're not broke. And uh, secondly, uh, I'm wondering why information like we find out in a newsletter are not sent by official email, but in a newspaper that people away from here don't receive. I have proof of this from owners in Canada. When we're talking about legal issues like we did this time, everyone should have access to this info. That's all. I'm sorry, which info was that? In the newsletter, okay. In the newsletter, it said that, you know, uh, you ask your lawyers about uh, what happens in 2020, and uh, somehow something was not totally right, and everything else. That's what it said in the newsletter, okay? But I'm saying that newsletter, a lot of people don't receive it. Okay, okay. So you should send an official email explaining the situation so at least everybody are up to date. I, I will, just to answer your one question about the newsletter, it is on our website every month. It, it, you, you can actually view the whole newsletter and in fact it's archived on, the, on there mm -hmm. so that you can read past issues of that. Yeah, but maybe some people don't know about uh, it. I, I, I can give you a few examples. No, I'm sorry. I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, you know, it's important. No. If it's important, why don't we make an effort to send a it's general on the website mail? that they can access 24-7 around the world. So probably we should let them know that they should access the website. How do we know who doesn't know? I mean, Some people from Canada that I spoke to today. Sorry. Diane, I'd, I'd also like to address something. Because it's very important what you raise. I think it is very important that we reach out electronic to, electronically to as many folks as we can. However, people have to authorize anything that we send out. They have to authorize to receive that information. We only have about 60% of our residents who have authorized to receive electronic messaging from us. So if some folks are not getting it, whether you're from Canada or Naples, 
If they haven't authorized or gave us a means to communicate, then we can't communicate with them electronically. So, but you raise a valid point. Yeah. And, and, and the, the tie out of that, for electronic voting, we will be doing a lot of uh, data collection and hopefully have more people sign up for information mm -hmm. that will opt in to be able to send more electronic. So it, it might result in a lot more participation from that point of view as well. Jordan? Where, how do we ask the, or how do we ask the permission of people when they opt in? I can't remember how that is. is it what if we, to get authorization for people to send we, this we, electronically? We mailed, we mailed I think. Well, I'll be mailing it out next week. Well, we mailed the opt in, opt out. No, we had a, we had a and last, I think last. Uh, two years ago, two years Tom years. did a form. Okay, so it is, no. so yeah. it's not like when you purchase and you have to like register things here. We have that sheet yeah. also that they, yeah. but yes. it would go out regularly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is it part of the new owner? Uh, may I? Uh, if you're going to talk, you got to raise your hand to be recognized. Okay. Mark Dumsky. She raised oh, she her raised hand. Her hand. Oh, you raised your hand. Okay, hold on a second, Mark. Your, your right hand there wants to talk. <laughs> okay, Lala, you're next. Wait, she still wanted to speak. She still wanted to talk. No, no please. No, please say. Well, he can't see you. I know the opt in was part of the new resident paperwork. That would be an easy way to have everybody opt in without having to chase everybody. Mm -hmm. It, it we is. just got done finalizing all of that, and it will be in the board packet, the, the new packets going out. But I mean, I just want to also this is it's not. I just finished finalizing it. It hasn't been sent out yet. It's still, it's on my desk. Okay. So it's in the works. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait one second. Riley, <laughs> you had your hand up. This is an exercise program here. Okay. You done? Okay. Okay. Now. Now. Yeah. You can yeah. Get yeah. <laughs> Boy, it better be important too. <laughs> Good evening, Mark Dembinski. I'm a two two one three four zero Lancaster run. My question is, Bill, you wanted to change fifteen oh eight. You know, the board's trying to change it, and then you said, if you in the news article, if I read it right, you said if you do get that change, you wanted to change four more things. Correct. What are those four things? I read those last week. Let me see if I. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I wasn't here for the. Yeah, I'll see if I brought it with me. Well, one one would be the assessment, I believe. Yeah, well, that's it. Uh, the other one was four oh one two e that had to do. I can't remember what that's for now. That's so many tomorrow. I don't. For some reason, I don't have that with me tonight. I thought I grabbed it when I left. But uh, yeah, four four oh one e is what Andy Cloverdale brought up had to do with voting, and that did not get corrected when we. That's the number of votes needed uh, at a meeting, and that didn't get changed. That's one of the ones we're going to look at doing. That. Uh, yeah. That was what it was for. There was a, one That's more one. Yeah, that that you well. said four. Yeah. yeah. But I, I don't. I honestly can't remember what they are, and I thought I oh, had okay. it back. I was just curious what yeah. the four was. And, and, and the but, reality is, is when we, if we get that far, if we change the right, so and, this is kind of progression. And, so if we stay, step yeah. two would be to re, to reintroduce four four changes. The residents would have to vote, assuming right. they, they pass that, then the next right. one would be uh, another vote. Uh, and, and then in the article later on, you know, they said that that article was in there to protect the builder. Well, I personally, I think it's in there to protect us homeowners so we just don't get stuff shoved down our throat that we don't want. Yeah. And that's my biggest and concern. Actually, the, that comment was made by our attorney uh, that was built for the... Okay. Uh, what, what I read at the meeting was actually prepared by the attorney. That okay. Like but I just wanted to, you know, yeah. say that, you know, I think it's in there to protect us. That's right. Okay. Right, thank you. Yep. Oh, any other questions? No. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody from the Did you board? Pass the test? No. Anybody on the board have any? Audience? Okay. Jordan, you're up. Uh, this young lady's name is Jordan Paul. And you have my phone number and email. 
Yeah, it's not on so. YouTube. Yeah, right, exactly. That would be perfect. Well, it's hard to find a meeting, so it's no big deal. Hi, I'm Jordan. I live on Sheridan Run. So I just wanted to recap. On September 2nd, after the last meeting here, I did have a follow-up meeting because I had raised some concerns about digital voting and the quorum and all that. So I just wanted to recap that for you guys. If you weren't there, I have a few copies of just, it's not all my brainchild, it's just an outline of what was talked about. So um, like it was mentioned already, I had met with a few companies. I walked my talk, so I had um, phone calls with two companies. One of them was Town Square, and then the other one was HOA Now. And then I had heard from Tammy, which is a great thing that the board had already been in some conversation with that other party host. Um, I think that Town Square is an incredible business. They do a lot of things outside of just voting. They'll do um, citation records, so if people are going around and taking the pictures, um, we would be able to have that. We would be able to have all of our documents on one place. So it's like an app like your email or anything that would be on your phone. You'd get a notification if something was added. You could have access, essentially, to all the important stuff for Stony Brook. So it's a great company, and it would be fourteen forty a year. So it, drop in the bucket. It is a dollar more. Is that square? Is fourteen forty? Yes. Um, HOA Now, which is a different company, that one is eleven fifty two a year, but it's a little bit less exhaustive of a company in terms of what they can do. Um, so obviously my recommendation would be for them to pursue with Town Square. I know that there are other companies who do that, that it would be my personal fave. It would take two days of training, essentially. The board or alliant would send them a CSV file, which is this, an encrypted certain file, upload all of the information, and we would be able to access everyone that way. We also discussed the idea of a street representative who can focus on obtaining um, information for, from different people in the community. Um, I had met with Mr. Bongerno yesterday, and his concern is that people don't want that, like the solicitation aspect. From pr preliminary research that I had done since our meeting yesterday, for the intent that we try to do, it isn't considered solicitation in the state of Florida. We're not going to be knocking and selling cookies and harassing. Although, if someone wants to sell me cookies, I'm in. Um, but it would just be saying, like, hey, don't forget, there's a board meeting, our annual meeting, there's voting, it would be that type of thing. Or, hey, we've noticed that we don't have your email, and to make sure that you guys are up to date on things, can we grab that from you? Um, it would be just really a, a relationship that we could enhance through the community to the board where we would and to, from the office for Alliant that we would just be able to um, reach out to different people in our community and let them know what's going on. I don't see that as a bad thing. Um, and then, of course, for seasonal residents, making sure that there's consistency with the votes and the time and what we are t giving them. You know, I know specifically for Canadians, by the time things are sent and they receive it and they send it back, um, they just don't get that stuff. Um, so the other thing is uh, Mr. Bongiorno had raised the concern that if we go to an all digital platform, which is what I would recommend, rather than paper and digital, in my opinion, I think that having both of an option, paper and digital, would be um, a conflict of interest, right? Because it would take someone manually have to take that paper copy and then go in and manipulate the server to say 21469 did vote. So I feel like it has to be an all or nothing. Now, if we decide to do a phase secure approach where maybe that first year um, it would be ballot and uh, digital, then you know that's something that we have to combat from a legality standpoint and ethics standpoint. But I think it is important to realize that this is the way of the world. You guys are probably able to check your email on your phone, so there's no reason why you wouldn't be able to actually vote online. I do want to share some statistics. 93, here's the uh, Mr. Bongiorno, the stats that I was telling you yesterday. As of June of 2021, 93% of American adults are online, 85% of them own a, own a smartphone, 80% have internet in their home, um, 75 own a computer, 50 own a tablet. As of March 21, 96% of adults up to age 64 go online, 65 to 69, 85% of those. And that's just consistent across the board. So to say that older people won't be able to understand it or can't adapt to a, dig a digital platform, I think is kind of a moot point with the research that's been done. Um, and then also, Mr. Reynolds, I realized in the newspaper, after speaking with Mr. Bongiorno yesterday, that the effort is still to decrease the quorum, according to your 
article to, in the newsletter. But after speaking with you, I know that you had confirmed that it was presented as an illegal action from the attorney. So I do think that for everyone, we would need some type of addendum to your article. <sighs> I want to respond. Thank you, Jordan. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> First of all, we had a very, very cordial meeting yesterday. Jordan brought up a lot of issues that folks at her meeting brought up, some of which I, I think were very good. I, too, did a little research since our meeting yesterday. <laughs> and I went on uh, Quizlet. I got some data. A lot of it is very consistent with what you said, with the exception of some things. Probably 85% of internet use is between, folks between the ages of 25 and 54. That sounds logical to me. Uh, however, for some of the few like me that has a lot of white hair, I, I, use, the dig, I use the internet, by the way, but 65% of older Americans do not use the internet. And I asked you one question yesterday. You didn't seem to want to listen to it. Why would we do anything to reduce the number of people wanting to vote by taking away a paper ballot? You just said here, and I didn't hear it yesterday, that someone with a paper ballot can manipulate the voting. I didn't say that. Well, I, maybe I'm paraphrasing, but a paper ballot, you come in here or you mail it, it's a paper ballot. How is that any manipulation? Can I, can I respond to that? Well, wait until he gets done talking. So I said that whoever is in charge, so let's just say Jim. I'm sorry. Oh, wow. I'm telling you, I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, what I had said was that the conflict of whoever is in charge of uploading the data, so let's say we have 10 people who voted paper and we have 90 people who voted digitally. Well, someone, so in this case, Jim, would have to be responsible for taking that data so we would have an official record of the paper ballot and then putting it into the digital platform to say that we have, that that person voted. So do you see now, because now a human is in charge of it. Of course, I want to believe that people are ethical, okay? But we all know that some things, you either make a mistake or just good things fall through the cracks, right? So you have the ethical dilemma then of human error and ethics of a person being able to go into the digital platform and say, hey, Jordan put in her paper ballot and now I'm going to enter it digitally and this is her record. There's no way to know, right? Because the, the, the votes would be confidential to anyone else, but to the person who has access, they, would, they could theoretically be able to manipulate it. So you still didn't answer the one question that I asked you yesterday. Why would I want to reduce? Why do you want to reduce the number of people that could vote by saying it has to be this way or no way? Then I would like to ask you a question. Why are you so adamant in reducing the amount of votes that you need in the first place? So, 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 so. I, that's not what I said. If I wanted to vote with a paper ballot, even if we have electronic voting, I don't want my right to vote mandated or taken away because I have to do it digitally. Not everybody has a smartphone that can download an app, Jordan. And we talked everybody does. I know, we talked about this yesterday too. I, I researched that too. I know, but you have to let me finish sentences, especially in front of people today. Okay. So I also suggested a, a conversation or an idea that got brought up in the meeting would be that there would be a hub during work hours where it would be locked, it would be secure, where someone would be able to come in and vote during hours. Your rebuttal to that was if someone is willing to do that, why don't they just bring the paper ballot? And I go back to my original point that is if we are phasing into a digital platform, then at some point it is going to have to be an all or nothing from an ethics standpoint. Who says that? You? 
ethics? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I say that. That would be my opinion. Jordan. 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 Yes. So what I'm, I'm understanding is, you know, there's a fear on your part that somebody could manually uh, the, the hard yeah, paper yeah. ballot screw that up. Is, the, is, is there not a fear that some way electronically it can happen to? Well, you would have username and password, so it would be similar to you fear that okay. someone... so I'm just going to share something with you. I have a UPS account that just got hacked. Okay. All right. I have $9,000 of UPS bills that I didn't send out. How? I have no idea. I don't work in IT, so I, I I'm just, cannot thank answer. You, but it can happen. It can happen. It can there's happen nothing, anything. There's nothing that's absolutely foolproof. The argument here, though, is that you, USPS could lose the ballot. So someone with good intentions, I mean, there are ways for votes to get lost or mm -hmm. any, like, of course, that's we're all human. Like there are issues with it all. I am saying there's nothing written in stone that is it's 100% guaranteed perfect. Is that would you nothing. agree with that? I have would you a agree with why that? Why would you want to take the 10% away? Um, if it's only 10%, is it really going to sway the vote? Instead, you would take it away from 10% of the people that can't vote at all. If you're talking just 10%, would it really affect the outcome? I mean, how many? Let me know. let me it just ask be, this: How many of you do any type of bill pay, digital banking, email, on some type of electronic device? How about how many of you do not? Not one aspect of your life is digital. Not one. None? Okay. So, I mean, out of a room of 40 people, one, yeah, I mean, I guess that would be a lost vote, but at the same time, like, people would have still opportunities to do it. This is the way that we are going, and if you want to increase the